I'm going to call on several people to just share with you a little bit. Some have not been able to share this week. We trust that there will be tonight. I'm going to ask Pastor Ron Clark to come, please. See, one thing I'm excited about is what God's doing is not just affecting one person. It's affecting right across the board. It doesn't matter what denomination or abomination you're from. We've seen God touch the Methodists. We've seen God touch the Baptists. We've seen God touch, would you believe it, the Pentecostals. We've seen God touch the charismatics, the crazy-matics, the automatics. We've seen God touch the word of faith or the word of doubt and unbelief, whichever one there is available. And it's exciting to see what God's doing. Come here, Pastor Ron. It started um, last year. My wife, Belinda, came over to a, the meetings and um, I was too busy pastoring my church to come at the beginning. But she came home the first night at two in the morning. And I and the children were already asleep. And I trusted her. And I knew that it would be okay that she was five hours late. I love Brother Strader. And we, Belinda and I, got our start in the ministry here with Brother Strader. And she was with Brother Strader, so I trusted that everything was okay. <sighs> but at 2.30 in the morning, I was suddenly awakened by my wife, Belinda, and she was drunk.
I, I did not know what to say. So as politely as I could, I said, what have you done? And she laughed at me. for a half hour. In the morning, we had a talk. And she explained to me what happened. She had been to Joel's place. Thank you. And she said to me that Brother Strader wanted me to come and sit next to him at a meeting.
What's happening here is very holy. What's happening is very real. It's the Holy Ghost. It's a sign and a wonder. If anybody knows this man, you know that he has. He has a great church in the city of Tampa. He's a well-respected pastor. And I'll tell you, you know what? God just gets people that are sometimes just so dignified. <laughs> and he was just telling me last night, he said, on Wednesday night at the church, the power of God hit his wife. She grabbed hold of a gang member and upended him on the floor by the power of God. And then stood him up and there's this guy towering above his wife and she pointed at him and said, are you saved? And he said, no, she said, well, you better get saved. And she led him to Jesus and he fell out again under the power of God. <laughs> then she, then his little wife grabs a microphone and preaches up a storm, the whole church come unglued. And he was just telling me, he said, my wife never does that. He said, my wife, the most she'd ever do is announcements. But that's what happens when the Holy Ghost comes on you. It's very real, folk. I just want to say this, you know, and I, I know this is camp meeting, so the people here love the move of God. But just in case there's one or two skeptics here, I need to issue this warning. You have to be very careful what you say about the move of God. Because you see, Jesus said that which is said against me will be forgiven. That which is said against my Father will be forgiven. But that which is said against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven. Not in this life or in the life to come. And blasphemy, people don't understand this, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is when you attribute what God's doing to the work of the demonic. And there's some people in the charismatic world, even today, that have seriously grieved or offended the Holy Ghost, and some even stand right on the edge of blaspheming the Spirit of Grace. Now you say, well, what does all that have for me? Maybe nothing. But it's none of your business because God's touching him and changing him. You say, well, how does that help me? Maybe it doesn't help you, but God's touching him and changing him and doing a work in him. And then I'm amazed at all the testimonies that people have been watching the videos and have seen something like that and the power of God come right through the screen and just hit them right in the room. And, and, and a similar type thing, not the same, but similar. And God just revealed himself to them in a very real and special way. And I tell you what, I want you to listen very carefully right now. Because I believe God wants to take us deeper into the move of the Spirit of God. But the problem is there's still some people here that think that this is a game or a joke. And it's not. What's happening here is much more than laughter. It's much more than any manifestation. What is happening here is a move of the Spirit of God on the hearts of His people, touching them 
and changing them. And it is very holy. It's very holy. We haven't even begun to see what God will do in these last days. Amen. Let us divine make a step or the village. The key store a man the day the moon gave a kit on the number non do ya do a dasa de ele most to be on a makata. Zatia de vegomone and on a mone sevele tojeba. Zeves de Mikiti, Iliotorma, Zebe, Vongiamanomo, say ata. For the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, skeptic. It began this way, it shall end this way. For I, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, am moving on the face of the earth. It is not a new thing. It is the same thing that I did in the beginning. For you shall see even greater things than this. For I am doing a work. It shall shake the nation. It shall turn it upside down. It shall shake it real good. And it shall turn it right side up again. And the glory of the end shall not be compared to the glory of the beginning. So sit back and watch. It's going to happen whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. We're so privileged to have President of ORU, Evangelist Richard Roberts here with us tonight. Dear brother, won't you come ministering song for us? We love you.
I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Acts, chapter 19. chapter 19 verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and evil spirits went out of them then if you go back to Acts chapter 2 and I want to read verse 
41. Then they gladly, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Then if you would please go over to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. And verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. How many believe that God should be allowed to do whatever he wants to do. I want you to notice on those two references that I read to you, I read three, but the two referring to signs and wonders. The scripture doesn't really say anything about what those signs and wonders were. We've automatically thought that signs and wonders was, you know, healing the sick or miracles. But even the very name Acts of the Apostles or really should be known as Acts of the Holy Ghost is talking about demonstrations of the power of God. And what we have to realize is that there's a realm of the supernatural that God wants to take the church into. But the church is drawn back for fear of excess or fear of being labeled radical. And so they pull back from the realm of the supernatural. If you just look back at the early Pentecostals at the turn of the century, how they were mocked because they just spoke in tongues and yet today speaking in tongues is a common charismatic phenomenon. And you can even be dignified and speak with other tongues. Yet at the turn of the century, you were ostracized. <laughs> Wherever the move of the Spirit of God, there's going to be acts of the Holy Ghost. And whenever the acts of the Holy Ghost, the result is going to be the same as the book of Acts. People added to the church. The Bible says over in Acts 19, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Lives are going to be changed. Sick bodies are going to be healed. The Bible says that Philip preached and there was great joy in the city. There was great joy in the city. Now some people talk about reverencing the Holy Ghost and they think in order to reverence the Holy Ghost that you have to be quiet and not make any noise in the church because you want to reverence the Holy Ghost. 
But reverencing the Holy Ghost has got absolutely nothing to do with being quiet. Reverencing the Holy Ghost has got to do with respecting what he's doing at the moment. If you visited somebody's house, you would respect them and honor them by flowing with what they wanted to do. You don't walk into somebody's house and take over. And there have been times, and you know in the meetings, where everything's just been so quiet and people have been weeping, you know, before God and in those consecration type services, we've had one here this week. But then there are times when the Holy Ghost is poured out, the fire of God falls, and it's just Holy Ghost chaos. But what I want to tell you tonight is that we need to look beyond what we sing with the natural eye. We need to look beyond what we are hearing with the natural ear and realize that any outward sign is only an outward sign really of an inward work of the Spirit of God that God is doing in the lives of His people. Last night, this pastor was sitting right over here. He told me this morning, he testified, he said that Monday he was going to check himself into a mental institution. If that's the truth, wave your hand at me. Last night, he began to laugh uncontrollably. The joy of the Lord hit him right there. Nobody even laid hands on him. And he is not checking himself into anything other than into God's institution. Hallelujah. God totally set him free. Totally set him free. As a minister of the gospel, I was so hungry to see God move that I prayed a prayer that got me in a lot of trouble. I said, God, I don't care what you do, but just do it. I don't care what you do. I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you to come and move in the meetings. I'm tired of having dead services. I'm tired of having meetings where nobody shows up at. I'm tired of preaching sermons that there's nobody there to listen to them. I'm tired of giving altar calls when nobody gets saved. I didn't go to God and say, Lord, let's have something a little unusual in the meetings that I know I'm going to take a lot of persecution over. I'll tell you what, Lord, let's have a lot of joy and laughter and people getting drunk and falling out in the power of God. We'd really enjoy that. And especially while I'm preaching. Even though there's nothing funny, Lord, just let it happen. But what you have to realize is this joy has got nothing to do with an amusement of the mind. It's a bubbling out of your belly. 
it comes out of the heart. Joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit. If you talk to a lot of people in the evangelical world today, you'd think that we were committing an evil here. You'd think we were committing some atrocity here as the body of Christ coming together and having this outbreak of emotion. This is not just an outbreak of any emotion. This is an outbreak of a holy emotion that comes from the hearts. God is pouring out the oil. God is pouring out the wine. Now I asked the Lord, I said, God, why are you doing this? How many think that's a valid question? The Lord said to me, he said, I want you to get my people drunk. He said, I want you to get them filled. He said, I want you to get them intoxicated. He said, I want you to get them inebriated. I said, why? He said, because they are drunk, they are intoxicated, they are inebriated on the spirit of the world. The things of the world mean more to them than the things of the Word and the Spirit. He said, I want you to get them filled with the new wine of the Holy Ghost. When you get drunk on the wine of the flesh, the works of the flesh, there are 17 of them become prominent in your life. When you get drunk on the new wine of the Holy Ghost, the nine fruit of the Spirit become prominent in your life. When you're drunk on the flesh, then the lust of the flesh and everything of the life of sin becomes a reality in your life. But when you're drunk on the new wine of the Holy Ghost, Jesus becomes so very real to you and you fall in love with Him all over again and He restores back to you the joy of your salvation. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 18, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Then it goes on to say, speaking to yourselves. You know you're drunk when you start speaking to yourself. <laughs> speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. And then he goes on to talk about submitting yourselves one to another. It's only a church that is drunk on the new wine that's going to come together in one accord in one place. It's only a church that is filled with a new wine that are going to look at each other the way that Jesus sees them. They're not going to look through denominational glasses. When you get filled with the wine of the Holy Ghost, the problems of life will fade away. But I want you to know tonight, the bar is open. The name of the bar is Joel's Place. J-O-E-L. The drinks are on the house. It's not going to cost you anything. And when you've had a drink, you can have another one. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you 
have ever got drunk in the natural? Raise your hands. Keep them raised. You've got drunk in the natural. All right, you can put them down. If you got drunk in the natural, how many got drunk from just walking past a bar and smelling the booze? Some people think it's just a sovereign work of God. You got to yield yourself. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. You can't sit there all staunch and stuck up. You've got to heal. Get them all drunk, Jesus. Get them all filled. Get them all filled, Lord. Get them all filled. Get them all filled. Get them all filled. Get them all filled. Fill them up, Lord Jesus. Fill them up, Lord Jesus. Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire is set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and they were all amazed and went down some said what meaneth this others mocking said these men are full of new wine but Peter lifted up his voice and said to them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. These are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that it shall come to pass in the last days saith God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Please. This is not a move of man, but a move of the Spirit of God. Verse 15, Peter said, as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. In other words, in Acts 11, there was another Pentecost. In other words, the same Holy Ghost that fell in Acts 2, fell the same way in Acts 11. The Holy Ghost is falling here tonight. I said the Holy Ghost is falling here tonight. I said the Holy Ghost is falling here tonight. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Because the Holy Spirit is here, I want to give an invitation. To people tonight who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you just put your hands down, please. If you are here right now and you say, Brother Rodney, maybe you've come tonight for the very first time. You've never seen anything like this. Let me tell you, this is what church is really like this is what church is really like what you're seeing here tonight is God's power it's God's glory it's God's joy this is the joy that the world cannot give the, the world cannot give this kind of joy while heads are bowed and eyes are closed if you are not born again I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm asking you to join the family of God. It doesn't matter what church you belong to, but it matters what family you belong to. If you're not born again right now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want you to quickly put your hand up right now. I want to pray with you and for you. Raise it up high. Let me see it. Us as if you'd help me, please. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Quickly put your hand up high. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Put your hand up high right now. Let me see it. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you there, God bless you. Up in the balcony, God bless you. God bless you. Put your hand up high, God bless you. Raise it up high right now. Thank you in the balcony, God bless you. Thank you over here, God bless you. Thank you over there, God bless you. Put your hand up high right now. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. Up in the balcony again. God bless you, God bless you. Right now, slip it up high and say, pray for me. I need Jesus. I want to be born again. I'm tired of living the life that I've been living. Raise it up high right now. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? Another hand over here. Thank you. God bless you. Quickly, put it up high. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Up in the balcony right now. Put your hand up high. Another hand in the balcony. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? Thank you. God bless you. Tonight is your night of salvation. Don't put it off until tomorrow. Don't put it off until tomorrow. Now is the time. Surrender you all to Jesus tonight. He loves you so very much. He loves you. Slip your hand up right now and say, pray for me. I want to be born again right now. <clears throat> Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Another hand back there. All right. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you've come into this place tonight, you say, Brother Rodney, I've grown cold. I used to be on fire for God, but I've allowed the things of the world to come in to rob me of my joy, my salvation. I'm not serving God the way that I should, 
But tonight I want to rededicate, recommit my life to Jesus. If that's you right now, slip your hand up high right now. Thank you. God bless you. I want to pray with you and for you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to pray for you right now. All those that want to rededicate your life. God bless you. 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 Hands are going up everywhere. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hand up high right now in Jesus name right at the back. I see all those hands. Raise them up high right now. You want to rededicate your life. You've grown cold, but tonight you're coming back. You're coming back to the place that you once had in God. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Put it up high. Thank you. God bless you. Up in the balcony, you want to rededicate your life right now. Thank you. God bless you. Raise it up high. Once you've raised, you can put it down. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Put it up high. Let me see it. Now the hand over there. Thank you. God bless you. Raise it up high right now. Now the hand over there. Thank you. God bless you. Quickly up in the balcony. Raise it up high right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Tonight is the night. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Quickly. Slip it up high right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. On this side balcony. Thank you. God bless you. I see those hands right against the back wall. God bless you. Slip it up high right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you at the back here. You want to rededicate your life. Thank you. God bless you. All right. You can put your hands down now. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you're here and you say, Brother Rodney, I've been going to church for many years, but I'm not sure of my salvation. The devil's always lying to me, telling me, you're not saved. You're not born again. You did this. You did that. But tonight, I want to make sure once and for all that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my Savior. I want you to quickly put your hand up high right now. I want to pray with you and for you if that's you right now. Slip it up high in Jesus' name. Thank you. Right back there. God bless you. Up in the balcony. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Raise up high right now. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you there. 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 God bless you. Put it up high right now. He loves you. Thank you there. God bless you. All right. Thank you there. God bless you. I want everyone to look at me right now. Look at me right now. In this section here, all the way to the back wall there, if you did not raise your hand on those three specific invitations, either to be saved, come back to God, or make sure you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer. I'm going to pray right now for those three specific invitations, either to be saved, come back to God, or make sure quickly put your hand up high right now in Jesus name thank you thank you God bless you thank you anybody else slip your hand up high right now thank you thank you God bless you in this section all the way through the back wall if you did not raise your hand on those three specific invitations you either want to be saved come back to God or make sure you did not raise your hand but you want to be included in the prayer I'm going to pray right now I want you to quickly, right where you are, slip your hand up high right now. Say, include me in the prayer. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. His hand's going up also. Hello. I want you to bow your heads right now and raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. Pray this prayer together with me right now. Say, Father. Everybody, pray it out loud. Say, Father, I come to you right now in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my Savior, and I believe in my heart, that God hath raised him from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Forgive me of all my sin. I turn my back on the world. I repent right now. I repent right now. 
I'm going to follow you from the day onwards. Wash me right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Change me, Lord. I am yours. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you arose for me. And thank you that you are coming back again for me. Thank you that you are coming back again for me. Now just lift your hands and thank you for saving you and for setting you free. I break every chain. I break every bondage over these people right now. I thank you, Lord, not one of them will be missing on that day when we stand before you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name.